All kids out of the pool for adult swim. All kids out! Okay, Jeremy, run, hurry up. Move! So I'm directing a school play, you know. It's not bad. Good break for me. Um, if you like directing school plays, yeah. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be pretty good, I think, you know. Yeah. But here's the cool part. They said that I can cast one faculty member. The answer is no. And I was thinking about you. I know, but the answer is no. What do you think? I said no. Well let me uh let me tell you about the play just a little bit. It's called Bye Bye Greasy. Mm -hmm. Are you familiar with it? Yeah. I have a copy right here if you wanna Let's uh let's go back and figure out what just happened. I said no. Uh huh. Then I said no. Then you kept going. And I said no. Right. All right, so now we're done. Right. Have fun with your school play. Have fun with the school play. Goodbye. Okay. It's a 1950s musical. I know what the musical is, Brendan. I know Bye Bye Greasy. Then you're probably familiar with the character Quick Rick. The drag racer. He's like the coolest guy in the entire play, Hello. Well, there are no cool guys in musicals. Coach, leather jacket, T-shirt. Are you not listening to <laughs> Sleeve me? Sleeve rolled up, pack of We are smokes. not having a conversation anymore. But check this out, and this is where I need you. I'm going to have you drive your car on stage. Your car is going to be part of the play. You mean if I played Quick Rick, I would drive my car on stage? Yes. That's that's physically... Like, no, no, it's not physically impossible. The big double doors in the back? Yeah? You can get a car in there. Huh. Look, on um, page seven. Right. Quick Rick enters. You notice I wrote, in his car. So I drive up on stage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, Arm I... on the side. Tip down your glasses. What's cooking? Hmm. The audience goes nuts. Wow, that's practically a fantasy of mine. You drive a car in a building. And then you go, I'm out of here. Drive off. Drive off the stage. All right. Yeah. Well, that's cool. I'll do that. What's cooking? Quick What's Rick. Cooking? Hi, Quick Coach. Rick. Hey, Brendan. Melissa, hey. where you been? I was at the doctor. I have a note. Yeah, let me see it. Does it say on the note that I found out I'm allergic to kiwi and if I eat one, I could die? No. Doesn't. Because that's what I found out. That's too bad. And now I have to carry an EpiPen. It has medicine in it. And if I ate a kiwi, I need one of you to stick me with it. Great story, Melissa. Brendan. Yeah. So when do we start rehearsing this? Like, can I drive on stage? Well, I don't think we're going to be able to drive the car in rehearsals. Because what would happen is if I ate a kiwi by accident, my throat could close up and then I couldn't breathe anymore. All right, don't eat kiwi. And I could die. Well, we're going to have to save it for the big performance. Cause I know yeah, i got to test it out. Well, it's like talk... evil Knievel. He didn't, simple you know, kiwi. Okay. Up. It's like a loaded gun now for me. Well, i got to tell you, Brendan, I'm a great driver. Oh, I know. I mean, I probably could have been a stunt driver. You know? And I just never got going in that direction. Should right. I show you how to use it? Brendan. Yeah. Let's go to the car. Okay. Show you a couple moves. So show you what I can do. Case of emergency. Everybody to keep practicing. Brendan and I are going to the car. My name is Walter. And my name is Perry. And we're auditioning for Bye Bye Greasy. No. Ready? Stop. That was good. Uh, I think I got pretty good roles for you guys. Um, Perry? Yeah? You're going to play Hank. He's a garage monkey who hangs out with Maloney and works on cars. Okay. <clears throat> and Walter, uh, you're going to play uh, Mrs. Maloney. Yay! A woman. Okay. Finally, some good roles for women. Uh, Brendan's Fenton Muley auditioning for the role of Maloney. All right. Hey, hey best friend, Brendan. Brendan. Hi. I'm play I can I can play Maloney. No, listen, Fenton, I'm playing Maloney. But let me ask you this. How would you like to be in charge of the lights? The lights? You mean all the lights? Everything, Fenton. Controlling the lights? Brendan, that's my dream. That's like playing... God. All right. What? The lights will be on. Oh, no, just leave on. them. Leave them on. Oh, no, leave on. them on. Oh. All right, Angela's next. Oh, the broad eyes are not again. I'm sorry. What? My mother has a band called Helicopter. What? My mother has a band called Helicopter. Okay. Well, that's good to know. Wow, that 
was awesome. Yeah, they could. You got the lead role. You're gonna play Lena. <laughs> Brandon? Yeah. I'm ready to audition. Oh, no, Melissa, you don't have to audition. You already got the part, all right? Lena? Noodles. Noodles? Why aren't I playing Lena? You don't want to play Lena. I don't want to play the star of the play. No, <laughs> Melissa, there's too much singing and stuff. It's not your style, you know? I love to sing. Oh, no, you don't, you don't want to sing this, you know? I'm telling you, you're Noodles. Lena's best friend? Yeah, the best friend. Her sidekick? Not the, the most complex character in the whole play, you mean? How many songs does she have? Uh, she's got a lot, but here's the thing. I, was, I actually want to talk to you about this. Uh, I don't want to hear you sing the songs. What? Do, do you know what I mean? No. I would, well, see, uh, I think what I'd like to hear you do is sing talk. Sing talk? Yeah. What do you mean? Like you go like, I am Noodles, how's it going? Can you try that? That could be your audition right now. I am Noodles, how's it going? That's awesome. You really? got the part, you got the part. Give me a hug. Give me a hug, I'm happy for it. That was great. Brother, uh, what about my part? Oh, you're, you're going to play Chip, Lena's boyfriend. Oh. Yeah, but I mean, I want to audition because I prepare songs. Well, yeah, go ahead. You can do it, but, uh, you know, I'm going to get going, okay? You don't mind, do you? Um, will that still officially be an audition? Yeah. Okay. See ya. Have a, hey, good luck. Thanks. Here's a little ditty in the style of the great Brazilian jazz crooner, Antonio Carlos Jobim. This one's called Brazilian Sunspot. <laughs> hello, Charlie. Hello, Bing Bong. Hello, Charlie number two. Hello, Pinky. Good to see everyone. Everyone's in order. Let's have a meeting. Okay. Hi, Brandon. Ah! What are you doing in my room? What, get out of here! Well, your window is open, my friend. I don't care if my window is open. That doesn't mean you can come into my house. Shannon! It does mean I could come into your house. You should have thought of that. What are you doing in my room? What are, what are you doing in my room? Don't touch me. Don't touch me. What are you doing in my room? I have a favor to ask. You have a favor, guys? <laughs> Shannon, I gotta tell you, I'm I'm really busy. I've got a play to do, and I don't really have time for favors. Well, well, there you go. That is the favor. I would like to be in your play. <laughs> Come on. What's you don't funny? Wanna, what is you funny? Don't be in I'm one. offended. No, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. Listen, well, you I'm just, wound I, me. I, no, I don't want to offend Look, you. Look, I see you wear those PJs with the feet. No, no, no. Those are. It's okay if you wear these embarrassing PJs. Okay. These PJs don't define you, and being a bully doesn't define me. I want to sing. I want to dance. Let's make it happen. Why are you putting your arms on me? Well, this is my way of auditioning. I humbly request a role in your play. I don't know. I mean, there are a lot. I, ow, ow, whoa, ow, there are a lot of people. Ow, ow, ow. Okay, okay, you're in. You're in the play. You're in the play. I'll find a role for you. I, I want the lead role. You don't want the lead character. There's so many words you gotta memorize. <laughs> ow, ow, ow. Okay, you're Maloney. Ow, Thank ow, Thank you, Brendan. <sighs> well, that was fun. Yeah, thanks for dropping by. Yeah, I like auditioning. Oh, uh, when's the rehearsal? Um, it's tomorrow at 3. Sorry, can't make it. Okay. So, um, basically, uh, I was very lucky to get, uh, Shannon, uh... To play the role of Maloney. What? Shannon! Wait, Shannon? Shannon? He's not Shannon? standing under my life. Listen, listen, he can play a really good tough guy. Trust me. So, Jason, I'm, I want you to continue with the filming and documentary stuff, because you're doing a great job on that. Thank you. And I want you to work the curtains, too. Do you think you can do that? I don't know how I'm going to juggle all that while I'm Chip. Well, that's the, well here's the good thing. I'm going to be playing Chip now. Uh, what? The, the, Did the, I just get replaced? Yeah, but you're still working those curtains. Wow. So I get to work the curtains. I don't get to be Chip, one of the lead roles. Well, um, it's a great role. <laughs> I know. That's why I'm playing it. I no, just... I'm playing Chip. Why are you whispering? You just fired me. Because it's embarrassing. I know. It's embarrassing to get fired. Hey, Melissa. How's it going? Good. And you can call me Noodles. Well, I will do that, Noodle. <laughs> I like that name. Junior, can I ask you a question? Uh, I don't know. Why do you have a question? Yeah, I wanted to know, if I accidentally eat a kiwi, will you stick me with my EpiPen so I won't die? Oh, I, I do not like a needles on noodles. But I will give it your mouth to mouth. Yeah, I don't know if that'll help. Oops! Sorry about that! Sorry, Brad Brad! I made a boo-boo! Everything's cool! You stole Lena from me, Maloney, but you're still a loser in a leather jacket. Cool it, Daddy-o. Unless you want to feel my switchblade in your side. Oh. Brendan, 
Oh. You know when I'm holding you like this? I was thinking, why don't we turn the lights down? You know, maybe go to a single low spot. Like a single spot? Like, yeah, yeah, you know No, no. Oh, my God. No, thank you, but no. Uh, the lights are perfect uh, the way they are. <laughs> um, Sorry. Actually, you know, Fenton, uh, I have to agree with Shannon. I think he's got a pretty good point. What? Bribri, why, uh, why would you be listening to him? <laughs> I'm in charge of the lights. No, because he's got a good point, you know? No, no, you are messing with the light. No, here's what I was trying to achieve. What if we just go to a number four yellow gel, a couple scrims on either side, and then fade to black? I see you're arguing, and you believe in what you're saying. Uh, I, no, I still... You haven't convinced me. Brendan. Uh, Mr. Lynch? Just stop by to see how things are going. Okay, well, things are going smoothly. Thank you. You may move along if you like. Oh, Shannon. That's nice <clears throat> to see you participating in a wholesome extracurricular activity here. Up yours, Padre. Well, Shannon? Um, what was that? Oh, I'm sorry. I was just in character. That's part of the play? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, no, it's, it's let part me, of the play. Let me get out of character. Okay, go stop yourself, Flatfoot. Okay, that wasn't part of the play. No. Okay, well, that's insubordination. Duh. That's another strike on you, Shannon. Uh huh. Two more strikes, and you'll be in violation of my 23 strikes and you're out policy. Well, is cutting class a strike? Well, yes, of course. Well, you might want to add yet another, for I did not make it to physics today. And why not? Let's just say I had a problem with space and time. Well, I'm going to make some space on here for another strike. For you. Uh, uh, Shannon, uh, why don't you sing one of your songs since you haven't sung anything yet, and we open tomorrow night. We open tomorrow night? Well, <laughs> then I'd better rest my voice. <laughs> Mom! Don't come in yet, Brendan. I want to surprise you. I'm almost done. Good, good. E everything okay? Yeah, no, it's great. Good. Uh, okay, okay, you can come in now, but close your eyes. Ow. You okay? Uh, no, yes. Okay, open your eyes, Brendan. Mom, no, this is wrong. It's supposed to take place in summer. But you didn't tell me that. I said, can you paint a background? You yes, you said, can you paint a background, and I painted a beautiful winter background. Listen, Mom, when you, when somebody says an outdoor background, you don't have to jump to the conclusion that it must be a winter. Brendan, with like... why don't you just make it winter? Well, why don't I make it? Because there's, there's a cookout scene. There's a Fourth of July scene. There's a big independent song. Well, okay. What am I supposed to do about that? Ha! Okay, 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 all right. It's okay. Don't panic. I'll just change it from winter to... To less winter. Mom, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up, Almost hurry up. I think I smell kiwi. Does anyone else smell kiwi? Melissa, relax. There's no kiwi around here, don't I know, I made kiwi pie. It's for the scene where Noodle eats the pie. You made a kiwi pie? I can't eat kiwi. Who makes kiwi pie? Yeah, what a specific... I've never heard of it. Are you trying to kill me? What are you talking about? I'm allergic to kiwi. Hey, Melissa, don't eat the pie. Pretend eat it. Don't eat the pie. Don't eat the pie. Brandon, I think there's something wrong with Lena. She's fine. She'll be fine. Brandon, Shannon's not here yet. Shannon's in the first scene. I know, Melissa. I'm bringing down the house lights. Great. In oh, okay. three. Great. Brandon great. still knows Shannon. <laughs> I know, Jason. Thank you. Two. Hello, everyone. I want to wish you all good luck One. and tell you that Shannon's been suspended. What? House lights! Break a leg. Down! Have a good show. You suspended Shannon. Why? A uh, curtain's going up, Brendan. I received an anonymous phone call accusing Shannon of defacing school property. Okay. When I confronted him with the accusation, he admitted it. Right, okay. And that was strike 23. Okay. The punishment is three days suspension. <sighs> and that goes for anyone else who misses the urinal on purpose. Uh, okay, okay, wait, 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 wait. Okay, okay, uh, I'll, I'll play Maloney, Jason, you play Chip. Uh, Brennan, the curtain is up. Raymond, dinner's ready. Raymond? In a minute, ma. I just gotta get the timing right on the carburetor. You and your engines. I think you would have been happier if you were born a car instead of a boy. If you were a car instead of a boy, you'd have headlights instead of eyes and tires instead of feet. If you were a car instead of a boy, you'd have... Hey, what the f***? Sorry. Okay, Noodles is next. I know, I Remember, know. remember, singing talk, singing talk, okay? I know, okay. someone has to take the ropes. Ropes, that's me. 
No, I don't have a date tonight, but thanks for asking, Lena. I've been working out to try to trim these bulging thighs, but the results don't seem to be lasting. Lena, I might as well stay home tonight and eat myself some pies. Eat myself some pies. Oh my God, I just ate kiwi. I just ate kiwi! I just ate kiwi! This isn't part of the song! I just, somebody stick me! Ah! Hey, what, what are you doing? What are you doing? Stop! Not now, not now! No, oh, sorry. Backing up. So, Lena, I don't really know what to say to you. I know I'm your boyfriend. Uh, my name is Chip. <laughs> Such a nice day. Birds are singing and the sun is shining. It's snowing. Summer is here. Tell her that you know she's seeing Maloney. Oh, yeah. So, you're not seeing Maloney. No, you know that. You know you that. Know. You know. You know, you Lena. You know that. Lena, no, you, shh. you know you that. You know that. No, you know that. No, Lena, you know that. What? No, you know that, not you her. You know that, not her. Who's her, Brendan? No, your character. You know that she's seeing Maloney. Oh, I know that you're seeing Maloney, the guy Brendan is playing. To me, I don't care because This play is completely real. sucking, yeah. Brendan. Um, I wouldn't, I, I, yeah. I mean, do you have any control of what's going on? Um, this is kind of a disaster, like a historic disaster. Yeah. So that's good in a way, because you'll be sort of famous for the worst play ever here at this elementary school. Yeah. Junior, you gotta stick me. But no, Dora. I'm on a, like three minutes. I'm gonna die. All right, all right, fine. Give me the thing to stick you with. Oh, boy. Okay, okay, come on now, 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 quick. Okay, all right, here we go, right? I don't have much time. Okay, one, two, and uh, can I just say that I have always liked you for a lot? Do you know that? Yeah, 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 I know you like me. Let's go. Okay, uh, one and uh, two and... Uh, whoa, 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 stop it. Don't stick her with that thing. Mrs. Small, you really are trying to kill me. No, I'm not trying... Murderer! 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 Somebody call the police! Melissa, you didn't eat kiwi. What? I switched the pies. I went out and I got a different pie. So it's not a kiwi no, pie? No, it's key lime pie. I got a key lime pie. Key lime? Yes. You didn't eat kiwi, Melissa. Oh. Junior, you practically saved my life. That's all right. Angela, I'm dying here. Say something, please. Please say something. <laughs> oh, sorry I'm late. Shannon, what are you doing here? I, I thought you were suspended. This is more important. That's the spirit. The show must go on. Yeah, yeah. besides, I want to find out who ratted me out. That's so Maloney. Ah, ah, Brendan. Ah, Brendan. Ah, Brendan. Hello, light god. What the? Oh, Shannon, but you, uh, but you're suspended. I mean, I called the, uh, I mean, I squealed on you. No, uh, but I mean, it's, you were peeing on the, uh, no. Hey, welcome back. Why, Fenton? Why? Why? Because he was ruining my play. That's why. Your play? You're not even in it. Yeah, but I'm in charge of the lights. You can't have a play without lights, because then you don't have a play with lights. Brendan, would you mind terribly excusing us for a little while? No, that's not necessary. No, Brendan. That's I, cool, light guy. In time, ah, ah, light, help, help, light guard, help. Hi, Junior. Hi, Melissa. I mean, huh. no, don't. <laughs> huh. I've never kissed anyone before. Me neither. Oh, oh boy, now you stab me with your f***ing pen. What the f*** you do that for? I'm sorry, it was an accident. Oh my god, my heart is so racing. I didn't mean to. Oh, 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 oh. oh. Quick, Rick, you're the best drag race I've ever seen. Come on. Come on. You're the best drag racer I've ever seen. Oh, damn it. Oh, boy. Oh, it's cooking. Hold on the window. Hey, Hank. Uh. What? Oh, you're young and foolish. No one will ever beat you. I'm older and wiser and... No one will ever beat you, Quick, Rick. Right, what? Hold on the window. Can't roll it down. It's broken. Just play the music. Gladys! I'll race to feel the wind in my face and I'll race to feel alive and I'll race 
to feel like I own this place and I'll race until I die. Somebody move that box. Oh, f this. I'd be the big shot there on the cell block, but I'm too cool to get caught. I'd be the genius there on the campus, but I'm too smart to be taught. I'll be the tough guy handing out black guys using my fists forever. I'll be the cool cat leading the brat pack living alone in a leather. What? Is that Shannon? Please. Defying my suspension? That's not Shannon, Mr. Lynch. That's Maloney. It's Shannon. You can tell by his thing. He punched me in the nose. Who did? Fenton. Ah, uh, me did. I punched myself. It's, it's a lighting thing. Me. Alone in a leather. Me alone in a leather. Me alone in a leather. Me alone in a leather. <sighs> uh, Brenda. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What? There's like. Five scenes left in this play. There are? Yeah. Oh, man. Sort of breaks the flow of a play when all the actors bow and say goodnight. You know what? Let's let, them, let, let, let's let it just be finished. All right. See your point. Yeah. Brendan, I'd like to get home this week. Hey, listen, I didn't ask you to drive off the stage, all right? Well, if you hadn't talked me into being in your stupid play, I wouldn't have driven my car Are off. you blaming me? You're blaming me for you driving off the stage? Yes, I am blaming you. Oh, great. Fantastic. Fantastic to you. Hey, Brendan, I just wanted to thank you for the opportunity to perform. I really enjoyed it. Good. Yeah, great. Glad you enjoyed it. I had a horrible time. Glad I could help you out. You guys want to race? Brendan, let's do it. Let's beat him. <sighs> well, he's gone. I think we lost. That is totally embarrassing. <laughs> I'll race. race. To feel the wind in my face. And I'll race. race. To feel alive. And I'll race. To feel like I own this place And I'll race until I die And I'll race against the other racers And I'll race with one big shout And I'll race against the clock And I'll race against myself And I'll race, and I'll race along with four other arcade classics, including Galaga, Pole Position, and more. Just plug it and play it. An entire arcade inside one joystick. Rated E for everyone, batteries not included. TV games from Jack Specific. Products sold separately. Look at the size of those M&Ms. They're ogre-sized, uh, just like him. That's a lot of chocolate. Must be under a magic spell. So what do we do? Well, when it comes to breaking spells, usually somebody's got to kiss somebody. That is not gonna happen. Ogre-sized M&Ms. Get them while they're big. Ooh, look at that big yellow M&Ms over there! That's the sun. Yeah, I knew that. Listen to me. Only through me can you achieve a power greater than any Jedi. Oh, oh. I can feel your anger. It 
makes you stronger. Rated PG-13. Meet the Aqua Teen Hunger Force. Here's Frylock, the Potato Man. Frylock's the smart one. Now let's meet Meatwad. He's not smart, but he's cute. People relate to Meatwad, especially stupid people. Uh-oh, here's Mr. Shape. Dancing is forbidden. What an a-hole. Say hello to neighbor Carl. Oh. He's impotent. That must be hard on Carl. Why not spend an evening with the Aqua Teen Hunger Force, right here on Adult Swim. And you kids have done nothing but complain. Dad, I smell a gas leak. Dad, I need the Heimlich maneuver. Dad, I see a strange knife-wielding man in a hockey mask outside my bedroom window. Nothing to eat. As if the basic food groups aren't included somewhere in this pile. Now, let's see. You got your salts, your fats, your lavenders, your cottage cheese, or possibly your very old lunch meat, your small flightless birds. The flavored underwear is mine! Could you at least cut us down from here? You know, Dad, Aunt Bernice does return today. You might want to tidy up a bit. Ah. Ha! Like I'm scared of that iron-pumping, steroid-popping, sideshow attraction cow? I'll clean this house up when I'm damn good and ready. Ah! Starting by giving this light bulb a good spit shine. Oh, me old Bobby, no caro. Me piace bello. Any chance that was a death rattle? is just a ceramic container with non-lead glaze filled with organically grown bing cherries. <laughs> Sushi night. Doc, man, don't worry your furry little tubular-shaped head about the mess. It's nothing an army of civil engineers, some dynamite, and a little lemon pledge can't handle. There's Grandmama! <laughs> Doc Man, am I to understand that once again you misplaced Grandmama for the entire weekend? Certainly not. I knew she was somewhere near the coffee grounds. Look, what happened was... You were busy with all your other projects. I understand perfectly, you incurable worker be you. Bernice, I don't know why this isn't a good thing, but you aren't yourself. Now, a lesser person might take this opportunity to trick you into cashing in your Keo plan and handing all the money over to him so he could spend it in one glorious shopping spree at Guillermo's Foot Fetish Emporium. <laughs> huh. But it's my role as head of the household to feign concern. Did something happen to you over the weekend? Yes, a thousand times yes! I fell in love! You remember I won the Schwitzing to the Oldies contest. First prize, a trip to the luxurious Casa del Gordo health spa, where the obscenely wealthy can lose those pesky love handles in a setting of starving third world types. I was asked to be a guest aerobics instructor because of my firm belief in positive reinforcement techniques. him from across the room and was instantly transformed into a flirtatious little schoolgirl. Hey, you in the mortician outfit, you just gonna stand there till your butt's big enough for a trailer hitch? You're a little bunny. A little bunny? A little bunny wunny. It'll whittle bunny wunny? An itsy bitsy it'll whittle bunny wunny. Although we only knew each other a short time, we found so much to talk about. You're a pokey wokey. An it'll whittle pokey wokey? My yummy scrummy it'll whittle pokey wokey. On our last day, he told me he was a self made billionaire. Then he asked the question a woman waits all her life to hear How would you like to host your very own infomercial? 
Chuck, man, I feel like a new woman. Me too. Unfortunately, I'm about ten bucks short. <laughs> you are so cute when you're smarmy and repugnant. I left some phlegm in your crisper. Otherwise, an uneventful couple of days. You need eggs. Uh, look, Bernice, I hate to prick your balloon. Doug, man, I believe the phrase is burst your bobble. I know. I just like to say prick whenever I can. Prick. Prick, prick, prick. Prick, 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 prick. A prick, 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 I got news for you, Bernice. Your Prince Charmless is a fraud. If I had a nickel for every time I tried lathering up a lady by telling her I was a billionaire, <laughs> I'd be a billionaire. Duck man, you cynical, mistrustful, assume the worst about everyone, wretch. Don't you think I went through his wallet to get a look at some ID? The man is Baron Von Dillweed. Never heard of him. You've never heard of Baron Von Dillweed, the king of billionaire entrepreneur? He developed a new home shopping network, BVD, where America shops in its underwear. My booty ooty wooty wants me to help sell his new piece of marketing genius, the world's most portable exercise system. He calls it the Rubber Sizer. He can call it Aunt Jemima for all I care. It doesn't make it a fat black woman with a bandana on her head. It's a rubber band, Bernice. What's next? You're going to tell me it comes with an instruction manual? <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Dad, are you okay? Yeah, fine. Fine. All the pointy little shards of glass broke my fall. Ajax! Oh, what have I told you about sleeping with Mr. Orange Rind? Were you okay while I was gone? Splendid, Aunt Bernice. I subsisted quite nicely on the bean soup you left in that large tureen in the room with the sink and the shower. That's the bathroom, dear. Oh. I couldn't help but overhear that you met Baron Von Dillweed, the visionary who gave us Liver Upper, the easy-to-use home insertion device for that bothersome hepatitis B. The man's a deep well of ideas. Just last week, I started wearing the skin-tight inflatable neck brace I ordered from his network. Ajax, those have all been recalled. They squeeze the carotid artery and restrict blood flow to the occipital lobe. Have you been noticing any unusual side effects? But not so much anymore. Well, I bid you adieu now. If anyone needs me, I'll be surprised. Careful with that, you could put someone's eye out. Wow! What page of the instruction manual is that on? I didn't want to break this to the boys right away, Doc Man, but since I care much less for your feelings, this isn't just an infomercial for the rubber sizer I'm hosting. It's the world's first info wedding. And guess who's the bride? This Saturday, Baron Von Dillweed and I are getting married! Bernice, why would anyone want to marry a virtual stranger and leave the family she's come to... Be right back. Hate to see you go, Bernice. I'm puddling up just thinking about it. But, hey, toss a wedding invite this way. I promise not to ralph up tequila shots in the punch bowl like I did at my wedding. <laughs> you're so cute when you're hateful, two-faced, and self-involved. And I haven't even told you the best part yet. Grandmama and I are moving with Dilly to his home in Switzerland, and we're taking the boys with us! Where was I? Oh, right, yeah, losing my kids. Bernice, I can't believe you're trying to give my boys to some loser with a bloated bankroll who owns some network nobody cares about. Stop the inanity. Call now and we'll sell you something for $10. <gasps> I got $10. Give me a dollar. The resurgence of theater is just a pipe dream, isn't it? <laughs> Excuse me. This is a private matter between a man and his bidet. Fine. So a few other people have heard of him. It doesn't make him good enough to be a father to my children. I hope you don't mind a bit of constructive criticism, Duck Man, but those kids will be better off with a pack of rabid baboons than with you. We proved that wasn't true, Bernice. Even if Ajax does still get a valentine from the dominant female every year. Okay, then. What grade are the twins in? Uh, 
By twins, you mean the ones who look alike? What color is Ajax's hair? What, you're putting a time limit on it, too? How about their dog? When was Gecko's last rabies shot? Ha! It was right after the last time Charles and McKimbo bit her. Their names are Charles and Mambo, Duckman, and Gecko is a him. Not since he peed in my slippers this morning. Maybe you and Dilly should meet and talk about this. Not that it'll matter. My ootsie wootsie tootsie what's those boys. And he does tend to get what he wants. <laughs> Tell him if he tries to leave, my foot soldiers will march up and down the boulevard until he's weeded out and destroyed! Father knows what it cost me to get him in that nursing home! Minty treat? Someone from an extremely distant tax bracket to see you, sir. Hey. A call when you finish, staff, rescue and show you to the door. So, you must be... Duckman. Duckman. Yes, I suppose you'd know. <laughs> ah, my 220. Ten minutes to talk about where your children will spend the rest of their lives. Bernice speaks very highly of you. Really? No, that was an empty pleasantry. Well, why don't we use eight of your minutes to look around my office? This, of course, is my legacy. I've employed the best and the brightest to work day and night in my quest to tie in to the national consciousness. Scientists, researchers, computer geniuses, you do understand what this means. Some of the great minds of our time are spending their lives making it easier for people to shop? Well, yes, and more. You're looking at the future. Soon we'll be able to do everything from the comfort of our sofas, avoiding the unnecessary bother of dealing with other people. Now save it for your shrink, Mr. Rubber Band Man. I'm here to talk about the future of my kids. No way you're going to Switzerland with those boys. I absolutely refuse to let you turn them into a bunch of cheese-eating, cocoa-guzzling yodelers. They'll have nice watches. Hmm. Well, that is nice. And you say everyone in the family would get one? I have no interest in taking your children per se. My only desire is to give Bernice whatever she wants. Starting with those cojones, eh? Four. <laughs> you have to applaud the man that came up with this whole insurance concept. Believe me, those children will have everything a child of their generation could ever need. The finest therapists, parole officers, and rehab centers money can buy. Money, money, money! Is that what it's all about? The real question is, what are you planning to do with all your money? Make more money. And with that money? Make more money. And with that money? Make more money. Don, I thought I could trip him up on a less than noble life's ambition. Hm. Well, you don't even know my boys. How do you know they'd even be interested in living a life like yours in a house like this? Actually, this is my car. Well, guzzles gas, but I only have to change the decor every 12,000 miles. Got its own airbag, too. Pardon me? What? Oh, I, uh, I said, what's that there, uh, ragu? Good save. Look, Dillweed, you think basking in unbridled luxury with all life's advantages is really what's best for the children? <laughs> well, never mind. The point is we should leave it up to the boys to decide who they want to live with. A complete stranger or the father who brought them life. Hey, kids! Picked up a little something on the way home. <laughs> Say, kids, picked you up a little something on the way home. All right! Oh, oh, yeah, Next week, I'll get you a championship franchise. Skip the maloo, skip the maloo, skip the maloo, my darling. Eat my jet spray, peasants. What's this do? Bernice, they're only kids once. Oh. Well, what the hell are you staring at? We heard about Bernice's wedding, Mr. Duckman. And we'd love to help out any way we can. Good. You can be the rice. Mr. Ah! He, he, he. Newt. I'm desperate, Corny. Bernice is marrying that billionaire in two days, and they're determined to take the kids to live with them in Switzerland. What would you do? Apply all my powers of concentration and put forth a heroic and single-minded effort to find statutory and or emotional grounds to get them to stay. If you were me? Oh. Buy him snowshoes and kiss him goodbye. There you are, duck man! You caught me at a bad time, Bernice. I'm here. <laughs> you are so cute when you're being a social lubricant. I just came by to tell you that this competition between you and Dilly is totally unnecessary. It is? I knew you'd come to your senses! I knew you wouldn't break the bond between a father and his children! I didn't have to. Dilly's lawyers are going to do it for me. They found a minor piece of boilerplate in Beatrice's will. Oh, fellas! 
gentlemen are from the firm of Dahmer, Manson, Gacy, and Bundy. Set the electron probate microscope to loophole. Now that that's all cleared up, we'll see you at the wedding Saturday. Go to your wedding? I'd rather get a high colonic with a hot poker. Okay, but if you have time after, be sure to pop by. Oh, Cornfed! Since you're like one of the family, Dilly and I were wondering if you'd do a few hours of karaoke at our reception. What are you trying to do, Bernice? First you come between me and my children, now me and my partner? Cornfed and I are inseparable. We're a team, like Astaire and Rogers, Lewis and Clark, Norman Bates. Anyway. We have a bond that can never be broken. Isn't that right, partner? Huh? I was thinking my tribute to Liza. If you're not committed to karaoke, I do a Jello Biafra meets Lerner and Low kind of thing. And so, needing to uncover something unsavory about Dillweed in order to hold on to his children, Duckman rededicated himself to becoming a good detective by going back to his detective school roots. His investigation left no stone unturned. <laughs> Along the way, uncovering something called the Ark of the Covenant. Yeah! Someone called the Lindbergh Baby and the secret ingredients to spam. Ooh. But as for Dillweed, nothing incriminating could be found. The only mistake Duckman could turn up was an attempted hostile takeover of Popeyes. Dillweed thought he was getting a chicken franchise when in fact it was a glass eye factory and he ended up with millions of glass eyeballs he couldn't give away. What? the world's first infomercial wedding. Now, Lori, do I understand from our unrehearsed girlfriend, Chad, that you use the rubber sizer too? I've tried everything from purging to tapeworms, and the rubber sizer not only worked better, it added gorgeous highlights to my hair. Dion? Well, Bernice secured my piles. I'd love to stay and continue this spontaneous discussion with my close personal friends, but it's almost time for wedded bliss. Stop the inanity and call now for the amazing new rubber sizer. Must have to wrap it pretty tight to make it an effective birth control. Plus, you could put someone's eye out. That's it. It's over. I'll never see my kids again. Wait a minute. Never see again? Put someone's eye out? That's it! That's why he's doing it! But how? What are my clues? There must be something from detective school that can help me. Maybe something my professor said. Duke Mon, are you doing one of those word scrambles instead of studying again? <laughs> word scramble? I got it! Now that Maggie's back in town. Look out, old Maggie is back. Thank you very much. Dearly beloved, we gather today in the sight of our target audience, skew 28 to 45 with double fixed income, to join these two in holy matrimony. Do you, Bernice, take this charismatic and recently featured on the cover of People Magazine Billionaire to be your lawfully wedded husband? We'll find out if she does in a moment. But first, wedding gifts are still available on your touchstone phones. Operators are standing by. And remember, with BVD, a personal relationship with the bride and groom is no longer a necessity. And now, the sacred moment. Forget the humanity! Stop the wedding! Duck man! You've been hornswoggled, bamboozled, jolly knocking. Cheated, okay? Oh, okay. Dillweed's cheating you by getting you to buy a dangerous $10 rubber band. And why, you ask? What possible motive could he have? The same motive everyone has in the end. A dire need to create a desperate, one-eyed society in order to peddle a warehouse full of surplus eyeballs. Vought again? This is preposterous! Ooh. I'll pay someone to badly hurt this man! Wait! He's been doing it all with the products on this network through the evil of subliminal advertising. It's his slogan! When you rearrange the letters, look what it spells! <gasps> and that's not all! Stop the inanity also spells, it ain't honest! Uh, what do you do with the Y and the P? And there's more! 
If you rearrange the letters in Baron Von Dillweed, you'll find it spells Ruv Nand Ildweeb. Okay, they're starting to lose their punch, but the fact remains that he doesn't care about you. He only cares about creating a completely impersonal and technology-driven world where people don't need people. And people who don't need people are the... Ah! One thing I haven't figured out, Dewey, if you care so little about people Ow! in relationships, why work so hard to get a wife and kids? Money, you ignorant strip of dental floss! My accountant told me the image of husband and father would make me more palatable to my shareholders. What? You told me you were marrying me because I reminded you of your mother. That and the way I split coconuts with my thighs. Ah! Uh, my eye. You put my eye out with that. Think of it as one less glass eye you have to unload. you'd find a way to rescue us? Yeah, you are always our favorite. We never plan on going with him anyway. <laughs> you know how it is some days. You wake up feeling neutral and you want to make a statement. Congratulations, Duckman. You dug deep down inside, and in order to keep your children, became the detective you've always dreamed of becoming. In fact, it reminds me of something I like to call my way. Hit it, Nelson. Thank you, Duckman. And thank you for saving me from a terrible fate. Can you imagine what would have happened if I found out about this after we were married? I would have been trapped in a loveless marriage legally bonded to a devious criminal. Who I could have divorced and sold for half his multi-billion dollar fortune! Ah! When does Aunt Bernice throw the bouquet? I asked the front desk for something quiet in back. Oh, well, as long as I know the people who can make a difference haven't forgotten me, I'll sleep well. <clears throat> KFC Crispy Strips, 100% chicken breast, and floured and freshly prepared in the kitchen. So they're crispy on the outside, tender on the inside. And new at KFC, Hidden Valley Original Ranch. To step up from chicken strips to crispy strips, you got a KFC What's Cooking. One way or another, I'm on Doritos, nacho cheesier chips. That nacho cheese taste, that big crunch, nothing even comes close. Gotta get Doritos. Freshman. New Red Chero Chicken Soft Tacos bursting with so much great taste, you'll be floored by flavor. Make way for the big taste of the Ranchero Chicken Soft Taco. We pack it with our new marinated grilled all-white meat chicken. Then take things up a notch with freshly prepared Fiesta Salsa and a splash of zesty avocado ranch sauce. Whoa, for a burst of fresh flavor, think outside the bun.
something smells good. It's the menu. Ha! Even the menu smells good at rattlesnakes. Luann, Luann, what did I tell you about? Hey, Peggy, if I get the chicken fried chicken and you get the chicken fried steak, we can... Just a moment. There is something that I must take care of. I do so know enough not to put a salad-sized fork in the spoon bin. Well, that fork didn't just walk along and hop in there by herself, did she now? No, she couldn't have. Excuse me, ma'am. Why are you calling my niece a liar? Luia knows we have a way of doing things here at Rattlesnakes. She also knows the consequences of not following that way. You will not use threats with her. And you will not tell me how to talk to my supervisees. And you have just lost yourself a waitress. She quits. Well, now, wait a minute. I wasn't going to fire her. Mm -hmm. It's too late for your apologies now, isn't it? Luann, pick up your clothes and three onion loaves. We are going home. <sighs> you know, I probably wouldn't have lost my rattlesnake's job if you hadn't said anything. Exactly, but I won't be around forever to do everything for you. You have to learn to help yourself. How did it help me to lose my job? It will leave you open for new opportunities, such as the one that I am about to present to you. The Learning Annex is offering a class on the joy of entrepreneuring. I signed you up. It would be really nice if sometimes you could ask me when you make decisions about my life. You're right. Would you like to go at seven or at nine? Mm, seven. I'm sorry, that won't work for me. A lot of you think of Trip Larson as the Hog King of Arlen. But he wasn't born with that crown on his head. He's an entrepreneur, an innovator, and an inventor responsible for edibilizing two new parts of the pig. Thank you. Thank you. My great-grandfather started Larson pork products with little more than three pigs and a killing hammer. Today, I'm proud to say, we kill more pigs than... Well, pig hepatitis. There's no secret to success, really. You have to have a passion for whatever you do, whether it's processing pigs or sheep or cattle into food and food products. What's a food product? It's like food, but cheaper. Young lady, you had a question? Well, I... Yes. I find that I am too busy succeeding to keep track of all of my ideas. So... I keep them in a file. Well, actually, that's more of a comment than a question. Well, thank you. I think so, too. Well, hello. How'd you like my lecture? Did you enjoy it? I mean, did you enjoy it as much as I enjoyed having you at my lecture? I really like the part where you were excited about what you do. That's what I'm trying to find. A career I'm passionate about. Like waitressing at a steakhouse. Oh. You know, you have that special, I don't know, unspoiled quality. And something tells me I think you'd do pretty darn well in pork. How'd you like to interview for a position with Larson Pork Products? Well, I did work with pork chops in my last job. Well, but to be honest, sometimes I dropped a couple. Well, see, that's the beauty of pork. It rinses off clean. Ice cream? Hey, what are you celebrating? Trip Larson has scheduled an interview with Luann. I get to go to his house! I don't see why he has to see her at his house. You think he could be interested in something more than an interview? The pork industry is famously informal. That's how these things are done. Uh, Luann, sometimes men aren't interested in what they say they're interested in. To put it bluntly... They're more interested in something else. Oh, you mean sex. Uh, no, no, no. Yes. I'm here for my interview, Mr. Larson. I am also here for her interview. Luann, let's go ballooning. Peggy? Why don't you read my autobiography? Oh, it's all so beautiful. You can see for miles. Yeah, 3.7 miles. You can see up to around 8 miles if you try this monocular. It's Austrian. 
They make the best monocular. Something wrong? It's just that, um, well, you know so much and I know so little. I hope that doesn't make you think I'm stupid. You are not stupid. You're ignorant. What? No, you can't tell... It's a compliment. That just means you haven't had the chance to learn all the wrong things. Oh. No one's ever told me that before. Well, maybe that's because no one has ever realized how ignorant you truly are. What are you doing? That is not a proper way to interview! <sighs> Whose house are we going to be TP in this year? Probably mine again. So how'd it go? Mr. Chip Larson is the most wonderful man in the whole world. <laughs> well, he gave you a job, huh? What position? Oh, I'm his girlfriend. <laughs> well, I knew this guy was no good, but braiding your hair? From the back, your head looks like a horse's ass. Well, Chip likes my hair in braids. He says they make me look smart. Luann, honey, it's not that we don't like your hair in braids, which we don't. It's that we don't like Trip. He's old enough to be your father, and he's treating you like a child. Stop worrying, Aunt Peggy. I'm going to eat my salad after my steak. Trip says that's the French way. So I can have my dessert first, then my steak, and then, if I have room, my salad. Salad after steak? I hate to say this twice in one meal, but horse's ass. Hello. We were in the neighborhood and thought you might like some of my brown Betty. We can also discuss my Luann. Hey, that's a good idea. Sounds fun. How'd you like to watch some football bloopers while I finish my set? You know, they send us advertisers some stuff that, well, you'll see it nowhere else. I could take a look. Hank, remember what we're here for. But this is private bloopers. Hey, do you have the snowman who caught fire at the Vikings game? Do I ha I've got three different snowmen catching fire. There he goes. How's it going? Did Blanca set you up all right? I would like to talk about Luann before we have to make a blooper reel out of her life. Well, we just want to make sure Luann isn't getting into any trouble. She is our only niece. Hank, Luann is lucky to have somebody like you looking out for her. Will you look at that? <laughs> Yeah, that's the J5. It's a little project I've been working on for quite some time now. In terms of timed processing, weight, meat yield, weanability, she's pretty much the perfect pig. Mmm, looks like you could eat it with a spoon. Just give me five years and you will. Oh, just like a baby. Look at her, Peggy. Remind you of someone when he was little? Hank, how would you like to ride in a hot air balloon? Hey, I don't have to tell you it's powered by propane. Well, that's one of the eight uses of propane I haven't experienced firsthand. Oh, dear Lord. Peggy, I feel like Neil Armstrong up here. I can see everybody's gutters, and they look great. Mrs. Hill, I'm a guy who makes his own rules. You play by them, everybody wins. Try to call your own game. Not so terrific. Well, let me tell you something. You might be rich, but all the money in the world cannot buy you the most precious gift of all. My respect. The man willfully endangered your life just to make a point, Hank. Try to see it from his point of view. He was trying to control the balloon and you kept talking to him. I was right there. He was pulling and yanking that cord and trying to jerk you out of there with every last fiber of his being and then some. Aunt Peggy... Chip believes that no one ever solved anything with a run-on sentence. What? How dare you? You do not come into my house and correct my grammar unless your name happens to be Strunk or White, is it? I'm just trying to help you improve yourself, Aunt Peggy. Mmm, ah! this
This will cook up nice, Hank. How much did it cost you, huh? A, a hundred bucks? Hank, the man is crazy. That headless pig is a threat. No, it's a gift. From Trip Larson. And it's to you. <laughs> I guess somebody owes Trip an apology. There is a large dead animal on my lawn. Look, let's be reasonable about this. I work in propane, so I give away propane. Trip Larson works with pork. So that's why he gave us this fella here. Uh, no, you're bruising the rinds. That's it. Luann, I have decided that your boyfriend is crazy. Now, do you want to break up with him or should I? Now just stop it. Stop telling me what to do. I am a proud, ignorant woman and no one is going to change that. Now that is the stupidest thing I ever heard anyone say. <laughs> you wiped your eyes on my tie. That's okay. It's an amazing fabric. Thanks, Trip. I feel better. I'm going to go home now and think of something mean to do to Aunt Peggy, okay? Luann, you are home. I took the liberty of having your belongings meat trucked out here. Forgive me if they smell delicious. <laughs> Luann, dear, this will be your room. <gasps> it's so beautiful. Oh, I don't see any of my clothes. Well, that's because I had them shredded. Plant mulch. Gardening tip. Synthetics make wonderful ground cover. But, no, see, I need stuff to wear to dinner. Not a problem. Oh! <gasps> oh. But they're all the same. Nothing is exactly the same. Everything has a small flaw or imperfection drives me mad. <gasps> You're jealous. I might have grown up poor, but I never knew anyone who kept a pig in the house. Well, that's because they weren't equipped for it. The floor in there is Brazilian rosewood, super hard, super high quality stuff. And I had it finished with four coats of polyurethane. Not that it needs it. The J5's hooves are soft as bedroom slippers. Shut up! Go back to bed, honey. I'll have Blanca bring you up a warm glass of milk, okay? Okay. Finish it all. Oh, good, you're up. <laughs> my, my head is bleeding. Your head hasn't been harmed. It's been improved. I took the liberty of dying it while you were asleep these last 14 hours. But, well, why? I don't want red hair. You don't like it? Okay. Well, we can always shave it off and wait for it to regrow. No! Good. Then it's settled. Blanca, um, I'm going all the way downstairs to practice my harp, like Mr. Larson wanted me to. <gasps> it's me. Except for the teeth. But that can be taken care of. Are you trying to turn me into her? This is the Larson Pork Products Girl my grandfather created 50 years ago. 
Her picture graced the walls of my nursery. Mother never really paid me much attention, but she was always there. I'm very sorry about your mother, and now I'm going home. Please don't go. I've spent so many years trying to find you. Look at her. The Larson Pork Products woman is as comfortable dining with kings as she is slaughtering pigs. I never thought I'd meet someone as perfect as the woman in that picture. And then I saw you at the Learning Annex. I guess, uh, I'm just so alone here. I get scared. I understand. And I mean to fix all that. With a big Halloween party to show the world just how happy we are. Can I dress up as a pirate? A woman is a pirate? Well, that's just crazy. I know just what you wear. This. Hey, it's an invitation. Larson Pork Products and the Dance Theater of Arlen invite you to a Halloween gala. Sounds like a blast. Well, I know Luann doesn't want to see me. But I am a silver slipper donor to the Dance Theater of Arlen. And those people still owe me an umbrella. Oh, great. It's Luann. I'll bet she can tell us where the bathroom is. Is that all you care about? The bathroom? What about Luann? I can't enjoy a party until I know where the bathroom is. You knew that when you married me. Hi, Aunt Peggy. Uncle Hank. I'm really glad you could come. You look nice, Luann. I know. Chip told me. I'm the Larson Pork Products girl. You see, Peggy, I could have come as the Strickland propane guy instead of renting this get-up. Mister is ready for you now. Oh! <laughs> this is Blanca. She's my best friend here. I'm here, dearest. <gasps> Luann, you've never looked more beautiful. And I've never felt more alive. I never thought this day would come when I would have everything I've ever wanted within my grasp. <gasps> Is that an engagement ring? Wait, Luann. I want everything to be perfect. Luann, will you do me the great honor of marrying him? Him? Javier? The time has come. That's the man in the end! Life is a series of compromises. Chip, I'm kind of confused. What is happening here? Don't you see? We can have it all. We can be the family in the picture. You, him, and me. What? What? You went, wait! Luann! Where did Luann go? That's for me to know and you to find out. And me to find out too because I don't know. Luann! Luann! Wait, I can explain everything. No, you're sick. I'm calling the police. Luann, you're not thinking clearly. I'm here, Luann. I'll take care of everything. Now we can become more support products together! <laughs> well, trust me, this is for the best! We agreed that I would do the thing for both of us! I never agreed to be a last support product! <laughs> well, I thought you loved me! No! <laughs> <laughs> 
left lever. Now, let me do it. <laughs> Mama, Papa, I'm coming home. Oh my god. I can suddenly think clearly. The voices have left my head. What am I doing on a pit costume? Uh oh. Well, at least Trip seemed happy. And now, he's in a better place. Honey, Trip had a mental breakdown and is now a sausage. That's not a better place. But you handled the situation very well. I did, didn't I? You saved yourself by thinking for yourself. I did, didn't I? You are your own woman. I am? I am! So really, it's a happy ending. Happy enough. Your mama isn't here to kiss your bruises. If you have a sour attitude, lemon, then go home now. But if you work with me, you could become the only fruit snack with three vendable tasty no. twists. <gasps> Sorry, grape. I'm okay, sir. Now, fall out. Only the best fruit flavors can get into new Kellogg's Fruit Twistable. It's the fruit snack with a twist. <laughs> It's the power of the sun, in liquid form. The power-packed taste of Sunny D. Unleash the power of the sun! Still doing those bills, hon? <laughs> Just wrestling with a credit card balance. <laughs> You've been feeding on those high interest rates. <laughs> I just switched our balance over to a Capital One no-hassle card. Huh? We're gonna save 500 bucks a year. <laughs> 500 bucks? Switch your high interest balance to the Capital One No Hassle card for the nation's lowest long-term fixed rates. You could save up to $500 a year. What's in your wallet? Attention, Adult Swim, all kids out of the pool. It's animation for mature viewers. Sort of. We've got specials. <laughs> Regular series. I warned her. And some stuff that's, uh, Hello Betty. Adult Swim, Sunday at 10 on Cartoon Network. Two gunfighters, Slim and Tommy Morgan, faced off in the street in little old dusty saddle rash. Still gives me goosebumps when I talk about it. The morning Slim rode into town, I remember like it was yesterday. My name is Gummy. I was there the day Slim walked into the barber shop and asked for... What did he ask for? How about a shave? Was it directions? No. Was a restaurant recommendation? No. Something about a horse.
stranger, how'd you lose your arms? In the war? Nope. Oh. What, are two grizzly bears, one on either side? No. Did you sleep on them wrong? Where can a fella get a drink around here? Well, uh, we got a lot of choices here. Over there, that there's Buffalo Burt's Hotel and Casino. Huh? Don't, don't you know Buffalo Burt's second most famous hunter in the West? He killed the last of the buffalo. There's one. One what? A buffalo. What are you, drunk? That ain't no buffalo. That's Inez. Hey, Inez. Well, she's new in town. Yeah. I don't know the other fella. What about Tommy Morgan? Which saloon does he go to? Tommy Morgan. Crappy Joe's, I suppose, but I, I haven't seen him in town for a long time. Not since the reward went up to a thousand dollars. Well then, I'll tell you what, old smelly man. Mm -hmm. How about I buy you a drink at Crappy Joe's? Well, uh, okay, with just one. Yeah, just one. Don't get silly on me. You buy. That's uh, what I said. Oh, you just say that. That's right. I need to get one of those things for my ears. You know? Soap. Crappy Joe's Saloon. It used to be a real dive, but when Crappy Joe bought the place, he did a great job renovating it. He really put a lot of thought into things like lighting and music. Okay, it's piano time. Feng Shui. A lot of mirrors. Bottle of something. Two glasses. That'll be two bits. Uh, bits? Two bits. Bits. Bits of... Uh, half a buck? Oh, 50 cents, 50 cents, 50 cents, uh, 50 cents. Oh, you have to Tommy Morgan, are you? He's, uh... I hear he's hiding up in the hills, you know? I, I think the only time he comes to town these days is when the new Sears catalog comes out. Want a straw? No, thanks. It's getting real loud. Bumming everyone out. Well, we used to see you. Well... Yeah, you, I'll, I'll wait till you finish up. We used to see it more often, but I guess the price on your head will make you a little less inclined toward city living and fine <coughs> dining. I gotta be honest, stranger. You are making me ill. So you're looking to make yourself a thousand dollars, are you? I don't care about the reward. Oh, no, of course not. Why would you? It's just money. You don't need that, do you? Nobody does. <laughs> And you may have no arms, but you got some tongue. That is the most beautiful human organ I have ever seen. Tommy Morgan's hideout was way the hell up in the hills. And if you know anything about Tommy Morgan, you know he hated the hills and he hated hiding out. No restaurants, no shopping, no nothing. Just come with us, Tommy. No. Come on. No. You said yourself you're sick of being holed up. So? So, come on into town. No. At least come outside. No. Well, we're gonna go into town. What are you guys gonna do? I don't know, get drunk, pick a fight, probably? Oh, yeah, yeah. It's... What do you wanna do? Nothing, nothing, I'm not going. Fine. Fine. Don't go. I won't. I tell you, of all the gangs we've ridden with, this one is the hardest to motivate. I know, man, you know who it's, it's Morgan. Morgan. Yeah. He's all pissy because now every time he leaves the hideout, someone's trying to turn him in or kill him. You know that thing we were doing the other day where one person starts a story and the next guy writes a part and hands it around? Oh, yeah. yeah, what was the name of that game? I told you I don't know the name of that. You asked me that when we were playing. I told you I don't know. You have to have a name, it man. Doesn't, it's a game. I just say the game. You know the game. We know how to play. It doesn't matter. That well, let's name it now. It, the story game. Pass all the right. story. Change the story, story game. Story pass. Anyway, that was fun. It was. Mm -hmm. And it he was. didn't want to do it. It's true. He refused. It's outlaw stuff, man. Sometimes you got to do it. Yeah. There's downtime. Yeah. Just hurry up and wait. Yeah. I mean, when you look at wanted, dead, or alive, you can't just see wanted, dead. No, no. You have to see or alive, too. You are so right. I knew those boys were trouble. The greatest penalty of evil doing, namely to grow into the likeness of evil men. That's Plato. He's Greek. 
What the hell is going on here? I don't know, but it's pretty funny. What are you, buddy? A gun rack? <laughs> now, would you say this fellow is armed? I would. And yet? And yet, he is not armed. Unarmed. <laughs> That's funny. That is funny. Gunslinger, you gotta agree. It's funny stuff. Oh, look at him. He's trying to think of a comeback. What's he gonna do? Hey, why don't you make fun of our arms? <laughs> yeah, what are you looking at? Our freakish arms. I've got a message for you. Whoa, he speaks. What? I said, I've got a message for you. What's the message? Oh, it's under my hat. I don't see where this is going. Lift up my hat. That was a neat trick. I've got a message for you, too. Oh, really? Let me guess. It's under your hat. No, uh, it's in my boot, actually. You gotta be kidding me. No, no, it's, uh, it's right here in my boot. So how's this work? I reach for your boot, mm -hmm. and then you kick me in the head. Close, in the crotch. You just better be able to kick me before you, hello, nice work. And here's one to your crotch. Oh! Tell Tommy Morgan, I want to see him. That was about the most amazing thing I ever seen. He kicked like a ballerina, a really violent ballerina. You know, like a one that will kill you. I heard the guy's nose break and I was two doors down. Now I feel worse for the other guy. My wife kicked me in the crotch once. Do you mean your mule? Yeah, what'd I say? You said your wife. Did I really? You've been doing that a lot lately. Ah, uh, well, I've been around the mule a lot lately. <laughs> hey, I'll see if uh, I can get Slim to come over to your shop a little later. Uh, I'd like to sell him some boots. Is that his name? Well, that's what I call him. What are you doing, arranging his schedule? Yeah, you know, every time a stranger rides into town, you are not automatically the personal secretary. Oh, boy, here we go again. Sidekick. Sidekick. Man, I hate you guys. Yeah, I do. Whoops. Whoops. No, no, I said uh, hoops. I said hoops. Why? Because it's Yiddish for um, congratulations. The barber shop was a good place for witty banter. Not the best place to get your hair cut. And it wasn't really a good place for witty banter either. Oh, that looks much better. Oh, oh hold yes, on. Yes, yes, yes. That's better. Oh, I thought we did this last night. I was so drunk last night, I can't believe you let me near that thing. Oh, man, I did. No, no, ow, ow, no, 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 enough, enough. Come on, let's go get this guy. What about you, Tasty Cleese? You coming? Mm -hmm. All right, well, don't worry. We'll send him your regards. You coming, Tommy? No, you guys go ahead. Come on, it'll be fun. No, I don't feel like it. Do you want us to bring you back anything? Nah. What are you going to eat for dinner? Oh, no, I'll find something. Can I bring you back some fruit or something? No. Okay, okay. I'm going to bring you back a melon. Honeydew or cantaloupe? Honeydew. Anna Headstrong. The headstrong daughter of Hank Headstrong, the headstrong rancher. Hannah grew up tending to the cuts and bruises of the men that worked on her father's ranch. You've never seen so many self-inflicted cuts and bruises. It was like an epidemic, but fake. Look, Hannah, I grabbed the wrong end of the branding iron last week. These two fingers are fused together. That's nothing, Hannah. Hannah, look at this. Me and my brother got drunk and got into a, a branding fight. Lemon juice will get these off, maybe, right? Don't pay them no mind, Anna. They're just showing off. I actually need your advice. You think this is infected? Ugh. Hi, Hannah. Hello, Hannah. Hey, fellas. So, what can I do for you today? I need some balm. Some what? Some balm. Oh, balm. Which, uh, which one? Cellar Secret. Oh, that's uh, Settler's Secret. That's good stuff, Hannah. You got to be careful where you put that, though. 
stings. Oh, no. What's going on? They're here for the gunfighter with no arms. Oh, no, he, he's over there right now. What are you guys talking about? I said the outlaws are here for the gunfighter with no arms. There's a gunfighter in town, and he has no arms. That's the story. Hey, what the hell? Slim had that big fella in a figure four leg lock. Tell Tommy Morgan I'd like to see him. Please. It was so perfect, it was almost erotic. Hannah fell in love with him right then and there, I think. That's the power of that particular move, the figure four. Mr. Slim. Ma'am. What are you doing out here? Oh, just having some quiet time with my horse. The whole situation was becoming really complex. And that's the thing I say when I stop paying attention. But I'm, you know, the narrator, checking in. I have to say, it was around this time that we noticed Buffalo Bert starting to act really strange, especially around Inez. We didn't know it at the time, but apparently, Inez had a bone to pick. And Buffalo Bert had a Bones. Did I say I was good at narrating? Yeah, they're not all gonna be winners. I'm just gonna get some clunkers. Thing is, there's just not a huge demand for narrators. Pretty much whoever volunteers. So you're not necessarily gonna get good. Sure, yeah, San Francisco, probably great narrators. Chicago, yeah. Plenty to go around. Not here in Saddle Rash, only me. So he's up at the ranch eating steak and eggs every morning and getting his strength back. Lucky bastard. I'd get beaten up and let them beat on me all day long if Anna Edstrong would be taking care of me later. Can you trim my nose hairs? Absolutely not. How do you figure he pulls them guns anyway? It can't be done. Well, maybe he got special bullets. For what? Special bullets. To shoot no-handed. Oh, here we go now. How the hell would special bullets help with that? Magic bullets. Oh, yes. I'm just saying. I'm trying to figure it out. You guys ain't. That lady needs a shave. Which end? I ain't shaving either end of it. Well, I, 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 I think there's something sexy about it. Uh, looks, looks like a boy with a dress on is what it does. Well, there's something sexy about that. I think, you know, there's something wrong, wrong with you, I think that. Well, I'm that, old. <laughs> I mean, what, what, you know, what, what's sexy about... There's something about, sexy about everything. I imagine so. You just take yeah. what you can get, right? Well, a little bit of hair ain't gonna hurt no one. You may think you're fine, but you're not. Well, I am, all right? I'm completely healthy. You're not. You need at least another week, and I'd like to get some more balm on those cuts. Some what? Some balm. Some balm. Balm. I'm sorry. I've got to get back to town. Ow. Ow. What are you doing? I'm gonna knock you out so you can't go into town and get yourself killed. Ow, stop it. I should take a look at that. Goodbye, Hannah. Ow, damn it. Hannah? Lil' Bill branded the inside of my lip. He told me to. Did not. You said brand my lip and you pulled your lip down. Well, I didn't think you'd do it. <sighs> she doesn't care. She don't care about you. Bring the inside of our lift again. I'll do it, by God. We had a few drinks when Slim came back to town. Okay. But the whole time I kept thinking that that guy in the poncho looked suspicious. Something about a guy in a poncho. It's trying too hard. Too kitschy. They know I'm guys back into town. Everyone's buying him drinks at Crappy Joe's. You want me and the boys to go get him? No. Oh, no. come on. I, I better do it myself. Yes. Can we go with you? No. Oh, oh, man. You know what they just got in down at the general store? Cashew nuts. What? Cashew nuts. A whole barrel full of them. All right, get the wagon. Yeah. So slim. 
Yes. Yeah, I'm glad you're back on your feet and all, but uh. Yeah. Well, if Tommy Morgan comes looking for you, he he's gonna try and kill you. Yep. Well, I mean, uh, it, Slim, it, it'll be a gunfight. Probably. Yeah. So uh, you'll have to draw against him. Reckon you're right. Yeah. Draw your guns. Right. And uh, fire them. Correct. All right. Shoot the guns. You know, you got no arms. Say what? I say you got no arms. C'est vrai. C'est vrai. I know I'm stating the obvious. Yes. But uh, you will definitely have to fire them guns. Fire the guns, yes. I yep. will have to fire the guns. So, if he asks you to lift up his hat, don't do it. Uh -huh. All right. Also, if he starts kicking, get out of the way. Yeah, or or shoot him or something. Good. Right. Thank you. No messages. Huh? If he says anything about messages, disregard it. Yeah. Huh. Tommy Morgan just pulled into town. He put his wagon up at the store. His men are stealing cashew nuts, and he's walking this way. You look familiar. Do I know you? <laughs> you remember El Paso? Eight years ago? Hmm. I was there. You remember a kid working in the bank? A kid with the keys to the vault? Yeah. Do you remember what you did? Kid, kid with keys. Not really. You shot him in the arms. Oh, yeah. 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 Well? Well what? <clears throat> that was me. You shot me in the arms. So I've, you know, come for revenge. Oh. Oh. Yeah. I did that. That's right. I mean, you have no arms because I shot. That is exactly uh, right. Yes, uh, I had arms. All right. Yeah, you okay. shot me in the arms. Right, I got it now. Lost the arms. Yeah, yeah, I got it. I'm sorry, man. I, I didn't make the connection. But now, yeah. Wow. So what are we doing? This is, uh, really anticlimactic. We got Tommy Morgan and his gang. Fox. Who knew we had it in us? I guess we were in the moment. You know, adrenaline took over, and we went with it. And we got a thousand dollar reward. But you'd be surprised how little you see. Half goes to taxes, split four ways, I ended up with about 20 bucks. It was also not the last we would see a Tommy Morgan. And when he came back to town, boy, he was pissed off. I still look at that picture and I think, that was nuts. Hey, that, that was nice of the marshal to offer to shoot Tommy in the arms for you. Yeah, you should have let him. Seems like if you practice a little more, you'll, you'll get real good at gunfighting. Thanks, but uh, I don't think a guy like me will will ever make a good gunfighter. Wow. Yeah, cause your arms? No, my eyesight. You gonna stop by and see Hannah on your way out? No. No, I, uh, I can't. Why did you Strange do fella, Why that Slim. I was sorry to see him go. Forgot your gloves. I love to tell that story, My though. Yes. It has all the elements of sure? a classic good story. Uh, why don't you describe Gunfighter, no arms, uh, that's a twist. Uh, 
a love story with a Jewish barber? Anyway, am I... Did I just talk through a whole scene? Oh, my goodness. Gummy, shut up. Home, home on the ring Where the deer and the buffalo bleed It's held on his heart And it's scourging word And the skies are not cloudy all day Where well, buffalo burn? There he goes. Hey, Inez. Gonna be quiet in town with Slim gone. Tommy gone. Inez gone. It was quiet for a long time. Driven to the limit, Rally Sport Challenge 2, rated E for everyone. Xbox, it's good to play together. From the very beginning, Smart Balance buttery spreads have contained no trans fatty acids and no hydrogenated oil. Trans fat can raise LDL bad cholesterol and lower HDL good cholesterol. Just the opposite of Smart Balance, which has the right balance of fats to help improve cholesterol. Smart Balance buttery spreads taste great without the cholesterol and butter or trans fat that's in margarine. It's that simple. Smart Balance buttery spreads. We have the right balance and the great taste. Grandma, what big ears you have. Why, all the better to get showtimes and tickets when I call Movie Phone, my dear. Hello, and welcome to AOL Movie Phone. Grandma, what big chunky fingers you have. Why, all the better to click with when I want reviews, showtimes, or tickets from MoviePhone.com, my dear. Grandma, what a big... Oh, look, honey, do you want to go to the movies or don't you? Visit MoviePhone.com or America Online keyword Movie Phone. Nitz, I need you. <sighs> Gimpy, I need your help. Chancellor Valorum is plotting against the Republic. Hmm. Hmm. Ah, what a pretty ceiling. Yes, Rocco's gonna get laid. I just hope this isn't another dream. What the? Cal, what the hell are you doing here? Hey, guy, I brought a friend. Keanu Reeves? Huh? Hmm. Huh? Ah. Yeesh. Oh. Uh. discuss a really unsuper state you tradition. On the first snowfall of the year, some small-minded freshmen run around at midnight naked. Ah, oh, you mean the exposed expo guy? What I'm trying to say is you don't have to feel pressured into doing it. Remember, it's okay not to be naked. I'll do it. I'll do it. Okay, but if anyone feels differently, I'll be here with my old buddy, Connect Four. Pretty sneaky, sis. 
So everyone is going to run around in the freezing cold with no clothes. Great. Ah, you bet, guy. Traditions are neat, because they're all about naked ladies. Shut up, Cal. Nobody's interested in... you. <laughs> Traditions rock. At my college, you've got an awesome one. Getting stinking drunk and going to the double expo to take pictures of naked freshman chicks. You hear me, Cal? That's what I'm into. Naked chicks. Tradition is the enemy. At Eckerson Tech, we've got this uh, Traditions Week where everyone is supposed to run around doing stupid college pranks. Yeah, you two ladies don't know what you're talking about. Tradition is awesome. That's right, guy. Uh, ah! <laughs> Home IV hookup I ordered. It's the last piece of my dorm cell sufficiency unit. Ah! Student? Couldn't help but notice you didn't make it to the mandatory RA meeting about Traditions Week? That's because I'm not interested in your backwards little Traditions Week. Good. Because I'm making sure none of my students participate. Not that I expect any trouble from a shut in like you. I'll thank you not to mock my lifestyle choices. It's here! At long last, the nightmare of leaving your room to eat is over, sir! Enjoy your dinner, bubble boy. <laughs> and how's the cat? Oh, great. Uh, oh, by the way, do you think you could juice up my meal card? I'm running a little short. No, Mom, I'm not starving. Mom, I'm not. Thanks. Bye. Lunch is served. Roast beef sandwich on white, please. Roast beef taco on a white shell, please. Roast beef soup. On white, please. Hey, Nitz, check it out. Double Expo souvenir shirts. Co-ed naked nakedness. Uh, no thanks, Brody, but thanks. Jesse, did you see the Double Expo crap Brody is selling? What kind of idiot would want to advertise that they're dumb enough to run naked? Sorry, but someone has to say the obvious. It's incredibly stupid. Absolutely. The college is all about doing stupid stuff so you can brag to your friends. What are you going to brag to your friends about? Three-hour lunches? So, my precious RA hole doesn't think I have the testosterone to go outside and do a few silly pranks. Well, I'll just show her how wrong she is. By organizing you men to do the pranks for me. But to make everyone think that this is the work of one, you'll all have to look alike. I fully accept that this mission may involve plastic surgery, sir. Duly noted. But what's needed here is a disguise. Let's see what we're working with. Students! What the hell is going on here? I'm giving away all my clothes, since I never leave my room. That's true. Yeah. Okay, girls. Carry on with the dress-up fun. We'll show that girl who's a man and who's a girl. Yeah! What the hell did Jesse mean, I don't do stuff? Say, guy, do I look more naked if I go like this or like this? Seriously, I did stuff in high school, right? <laughs> high school traditions like prom are stupid. Just wait till I get to college where they've got actual cool stuff to do. Then I'll do stuff. Nitz Walsh, he never did squat. No! I will do squat, I will. Starting with the double expo. Right after I get something to eat. Hey, Nitz. Blah? So, freshman, psyched for the double expo? God, it was so awesome when I did it last year. I was so busy getting ready beforehand, I almost missed the whole thing. The best part was going out for naked pizza afterwards. Wow, Kimmy. I wish I could have seen that. Pizza. Well, I'll be looking out for you when you run. Naked. Isn't it weird how different hands look when they're naked? Kimmy's gonna see me naked. Ah, then she's gonna see a lot of you. You're putting on the freshman 15, guy.
definitely see some snow in about six days. <gasps> the kids at State U who are running in the exposed expo will just have to keep their pants on until then. Well, I can't let Kimmy see me naked like this. I won't be fat. Gimpy, I need to lose weight fast. This wouldn't have anything to do with the exposed expo. Uh, no, of course not. I hate traditions. I just, uh, want to fit into my ski pants. How about I email you the Nosbaum diet? Works in six days. Callista Flockhart was only on it for five. Wieners, wieners, wieners! Put them in your mouth! What's all this? Oh, I'm just gonna stash this stuff on campus, so whenever it snows, I'll be all set to take pictures of naked chicks. Number one. No pictures allowed at the exposed expo. Number two, if you're not escorted by a friend with state UID, you're not... Hey, best buddy Rocco! Stick to the steam. Student! Something's not right. Feminine troubles? No, those stopped a long time ago. Shouldn't you be using Traditions Week as an opportunity to plot mayhem and destruction? Nah, but that would mean leaving my room. So, who's this guy doing all those Tradition Week pranks? What do they call him? Uh, Optimus Prime? G Prime. Ah, yes, G Prime. He sounds like a real barrel, all man, manly man to me. He's a stumpy runt. And when I catch him, he will be so dead. Just make sure you stay on the straight now, and we'll get along fine. Okay, I'll just keep doing what I'm doing. Step or take, each step I wonder if I'll take a look I will. No, Rocco. Nitz, I'm gonna stash my stuff here. What the hell are you doing? I'm trying to get in shape for Double Expo. So you're gonna do it, huh? Well, uh, I've just got what you need right here. The shrinkage is gonna be fierce in the snow. Ugh. What? I washed it. Thanks, Rocco. I just need to lose a few pounds, that's all. But the diet Gimpy downloaded doesn't seem to be working. That's because diets are for chicks, Chief. Men go to the gym. I hate the gym. No sweat. I'm your man. Uh, but not that way. How about I help you get in shape at the gym, you get me to the double expo, I don't miss any of the naked smart chicks, everybody wins! Ah! Aww. You got nothing to be embarrassed about. <laughs> Wussy! You're weak! Christopher Reeve could kick this guy's ass! Think we could try this without the shouting? No way, Wussy! Working out is all mental! Oh, I can't do this. Let's try another station. Hmm. Nitz, clean up your bench. I wouldn't pee in your pool. Don't sweat in my gym. I don't have a pool. Wussy! <gasps> oh, this ends now!
I'm cracking up. I see him everywhere. Please go on. G Prime is one prank away from being the master of traditions week. I feel so... impotent. Have some chamomile tea. You'll feel better. Thank you, student. Call me Gimpy. Thank you, student Gimpy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Rocco, I think this is working. That's great, kid. Don't get cocky. We haven't even started on the glutes yet. Think Kimmy will like it? You look awesome, dude. Not that I think about you like that. Or Cal. Okay, Rocco, I really didn't want to get into this, but what's up with you and Cal? Nothing. I don't think he's sexy at all. And what's that supposed to mean? All right, listen. Do not repeat this. But I had this dream about Cal. A homoerotic dream. Come on, I'm sure it wasn't. Keanu Reeves was in it too. Ooh. But you don't think that's a big deal, right? Sure. Huh? Ah! All the weight I lost has gone straight to my ass! Yeah, I told you we hadn't gotten to the glutes yet. It's snowing! We're all getting together in my room to pre-party before the double expo, Yen. No, I mean, no, I can't. I, uh, pulled something in the gym. Whatever. Hey man, thanks for talking to me before. It's great that we really, you know, support each other no matter what. So, ready to go out there and rock and roll? I'm not doing it, Rocco. Wussy! Give me your ID! Enter! Students! In exactly 10 minutes, there will be a mandatory meeting of all freshmen in the auditorium to finish this G-Prime business. Everyone who values his or her testicles will be there. Uh, do I have to come? No, student Gimpy. Finish your dinner. This is it. The RAs are going to admit defeat and acknowledge G-Prime as tradition master of Techerson. Mom, I've got to hear this. Patch me in. Nine! Hmm. Greetings, Nitz. What's the word? Oh, let's see. Uh, Rocco had a homoerotic dream about Cal. I've got a huge ass. The double expo is ruining my life. I just need to bitch with a fellow tradition hater who would understand... Yeah, yeah, good news here. I'm the tradition master of Tankers and Tank. What? Well, I, I kind of got... We are at your coronation ceremony, tradition master. Don't let me interrupt, tradition master. The reckless Traditions Week actions of this G-Prime have gone too far. G-Prime will be expelled to set an example. The only question is, who is G-Prime? I have a composite sketch from various sightings. If G-Prime will not come forward, all will be punished! With one-third of a grade off this semester's final GPA. <gasps> Crap. I am G-Prime! Aha! I am G Prime! I am G Prime! I am G Prime! I am Spartacus! Oh my god! Those bastards aren't covering for me! They're trying to take credit for being G Prime! I'll show those gerbils who's the real tradition master! We can hear you, sir. So. Oh. Connect for anyone? Look, Nitzer, the exposed expo isn't that big of a deal. I didn't do it. You didn't? Yeah, and my college life has been super! It has? Uh-huh. You know, I got an automatic pencil and the lead never breaks. The Dougler. Once at McDonald's, I got a Happy Meal and there were two prizes inside. The Dougler. When I take a shower, I always wear flip-flops. The Dougler. 
My God, I've been so obsessed with how I look, I forgot the real reason I decided to do this. I wanted to experience college. I wanted to do squat. Wait. The Dougler wants to go too. The Dougler? The legend of G-Prime demands the greatest prank ever. I must go outside. I can do this. I am G-Prime. <clears throat> Oh, oh God, I saw his member. I saw Cal's member. And I don't care. I'm not gay. And I'm not straight. Huzzah. <laughs> no pictures. You're in a lot of trouble, Mr. Nitz Walsh. I don't like Cal. Hey, guy, don't I look really naked in my naked t-shirt? That's great, Cal. This is great. I don't know why I was so worried. Hey, guy, there's Kimmy. That's Bob? Oh, it's Bob. Oh, it's Bob. Oh, it's Bob. Oh, it's Bob. G Prime is pranking state you! And I'm still Spartacus! Gimpy! Nitz, is that you? Kimmy? Good to see you. Well, I can't exactly see you, but you know. Blah! The motion sensor I implanted in Rita's neck. Rita's approaching my room. <laughs> I can't let her catch me like this. Cool. Yeah. Hello. Something's going on, student. How come you're naked? And sweaty. And, and, and naked. I told you. I gave away most of my clothes. And since I never leave my room, I can't exactly go out to the laundry. And do you have a problem with my sweaty manhood? <laughs> hey, cute. Maybe going outside wasn't such a good idea. Hey, Nitz. A bunch of us are going for pizza. You in? Um, sure, Jesse. After all this exercise, I'm starving. So, glad you did it? Well, it didn't last long, and it wasn't exactly fun. But I guess it's better to be humiliated sometimes than never try anything. You know, that's exactly my attitude towards sex. The Douglas! The Douglas? Is the game. Oh. The Frank Show. Frank, I can't see. Am I on the road? Not really. Cowboy Bebop. How you doing, kid? Aqua Teen Hunger Force. 
Frylock! What are you doing? Here. Are you ready to rock? Coming this January is Baby Blues. That's a new one for us. How can you guys stand that noise? But keep in mind, no kids under 17 allowed. Adult Swim, Sunday and Thursday at 10, only on Cartoon Network. Attention, Adult Swim, all kids out of the pool. It's animation for mature viewers. Sort of. We've got specials. Regular series. I warned her. And some stuff that's, uh, hello, Betty. Adult Swim, Sunday at 10 on Cartoon Network. Subsidized dating is prostitution. But what I want to say most to the people of this nation is I want you to chew things well when you are eating. I believe that's the most important thing. The first step to good health is to chew well when eating every meal. My greatest wish is for the people to live sound and healthy lives. Chew your food like your mother told you. It's absolutely true. And if you think I am lying, please look into my eyes if you'd be so kind. Well, what do you think? Are these the eyes of a liar? No, they are not. My eyes are the eyes of an innocent fawn. Got it? Do I make myself clear? Well, in case you didn't, let me reiterate. Chew your food well when eating. As a matter of fact, your beloved president chews his food a hundred times per mouthful that I shove in. So, president takes a long time to eat a meal. One meal takes three hours. Three meals a day is a total of nine hours. And sleeping on top of that, that's a total of 17 hours. Truly just eat, sleep, and play. So are you all well? That was an impersonation of Yusui Inoue. Anywho, so as I was saying, this month's goal is for everyone to chew well when eating. Do you think you can all do that? Sure you can. Yay, alone, sure, completed. Tetsuko, your favorite Hirosu's rush into poor people's dinner is starting. Okay, I'm coming. Oh my goodness, I just love this section. You sure like looking at people less well off than you, don't you? What do you mean? Why would you say that? <sighs> there, there. Just watch the TV. Rush into poor people's dinner. Let's see what the poor people are eating to stave off starvation. Let's go rush them. Oh, it's Hero Sue. She's so cute. She got into a famous university somewhere, didn't she? She got into Idiot University. What? Idiot University? That's also where Buckabon's dad graduated from, too. She's so smart. Hero Sue isn't just cute, you know. She's smart, too. You're kidding. No way. Do you seriously eat this stuff? It's disgusting. She said it's disgusting. Say, don't you think she changed her hairstyle up a little bit? What? You actually want me to eat this? Oh, please. You're kidding, right? Absolutely NG. Ah, she said it's absolutely NG. Maybe I'll go to the same hair salon as Hero Sue does. Oh, well. I'll pretend I'm dead and eat it. Ow. I'm seriously five seconds short of throwing up. There it is. Hero Sue's usual line. I'm five seconds short of throwing up. That clinches this year's Buzzword Award. That's all for this week. Next week will be even poorer. <sighs> that was fun. Hero Sue always looks so adorable. Shoot, it's the landlord. Well, what are you going to do, Mill? You dumbass! We'll see what the landlord's made of. All right, just you watch. You will pay the rent today, young lady! Bam, bam, 
I am the Riddle King Nishimaru. Huh? That famous Mr. Nishimura, the champion? That's right. If you can go ahead and solve my riddle, I will pay the rent. What? Sure, sure. I'll do the little riddle. All right. Here it goes. New Year and Christmas had a fight. Now who won? What? New Year and Christmas had a fight? Now who won? How am I supposed to know that? Now who won? But New Year and Christmas wouldn't have a fight. They're good friends. Wrong. Time's up. The answer is Christmas. But how? Why is that? Now who won? Now who won? Now, which is Katakana? The one that's Katakana is Christmas. Oh, I see. Now that's clever. You dumbass. If you got it, hurry up and leave. I'm sorry. I'll go study up on riddles. <laughs> Safe by the fact that the landlord isn't good at riddles. Thank you for the food. Mama, that nice man. When is that man coming back? Ario, shh. Oh, what man? Who is it? Why won't you say anything? Uh, let's see. Athlete O gives newcomer Hiroyuchi loving severity. How wonderful! <laughs> Hello. This is Kanaka's men's clothes? Just kidding. Yeah, it's me, Milk. Oh, Mr. President. That's right. I am most definitely the president. I am fine. The president is an insurpassable man at any age. More importantly, Milk-chan. What is it? Did you happen to watch the president's speech this morning, Milk-chan? What? No, I didn't. Uh, that's not good, Milk-chan. Watching the president's speech is every citizen's duty. I'm sorry, but I was watching Hirosu's Rush Poor People's Diner at the time. B -b -b poor people? It makes the president sad, Milk Chan. You always watch those low-level programs, and that's why you miss listening to my great wise words to the people. What? You don't have to say it like that. That's right! Hirosu isn't low-level! No way! Oh, what great wise words. I'm sure you probably just talked about something trivial that isn't good or bad again. <gasps> trivial? What in the world do you mean, trivial? If you don't like trivial, then it's stupid. Don't ridicule my speech. Everyone in attendance had tears in their eyes. You dumbass! They're just yawning! Oh, I'm mad now! The president's so mad my face is totally pale! <laughs> I wanna see! You must look really funny! <laughs> Damn it! I hate you, Milk Chan! I hate you! More importantly, you have an order for me, right, Mr. President? That's right, that's right. I do. So, what's my orders for today, Mr. President? Uh, yes. Recently, there's been a lot of incidents where the cardboard homes and parks have been burnt down. What? Cardboard homes burnt down? That's right. That's why lots of homeless people have no homes and are in a great deal of trouble. Milk Chan, please go and do something about it. Roger! Roger! Yay! Save the homeless people! But what are we supposed to do? Well, now, in cases like this, do a soup kitchen. What? A soup kitchen? You pass food out to the homeless people for free. Pass food out free to the homeless? That's wonderful! Northern. Pardon me yet again for my sudden intrusion. I am the voice of Hanage's heart. What? I seem happy? Sorry about that. I had a drink just a while back. Don't tell Milk or Tetsuko, okay? Cross your heart and hope to die. Well, don't middle-aged men make the worst promises? But did you hear? Homeless people. It reminds me of my wife and child. Someday, Daddy'll make his fortune and come for you too. Cross my heart and hope to die. I promise. Anyway, let's go to the King's Ikea Laboratory. Yeah! The daddy who created me is somewhere in this place. How dreamy!
Hello, Edward, world of TV. I'm the director of Kids Idea Laboratory, Dr. Eyepatch. Hello, Doctor. Doctor, Doctor, the cardboard homes of the homeless got burned down. Do something to help them. Yes, yes, I know. But I have just the right robot ready for you. A useful robot. I like that scrap metal of a robot over there. Please, may he not be my daddy. Hey, what kind of robot? What kind of robot? It is a splendid, high-efficiency construction robot. What? A construction robot? That's right, Milk-chan. By the way, Tetsuko, you, you, you were developed as a toilet clean robot. Did you know that? <laughs> Tetsuko is a toilet cleaner! Tetsuko is a toilet cleaner! <laughs> That's a lie! That's a lie! I'm not a toilet cleaner! Now, Milk-chan, hurry and go build homes for the homeless people. Yeah! Let's go, toilet cleaner! But I'm not! I, I wish you good luck. I'll take your panties as a souvenir. And then? All right, Dokochen One, make homes for the homeless people. <laughs> All right, Pipe Condo is finished. <laughs> How splendid! It's a high rise condo. Oh, thank you, Looks like everyone's happy now. They are, Milk. Just look at the blissful expressions on their faces. <sighs> All right, our mission is now complete. Let's go eat sushi or something. Yay! Yay! And now the sequel to Milk's story of the towering homeless. And now, we will have the President's annual speech broadcast. <clears throat> uh, our nation's basic principle is nudist. But what I want to say most to the people of this nation is, you must not judge people based on their looks, it's not right. People cannot be judged by their looks. Let me give you an example to illustrate my point that Gymnast Ikatani is actually a very nice person and Mr. Gatch is a smart person. It's absolutely true. If you think I'm lying, please take a look at my eyes. You'll see the sincerity. Well, you see, are these the eyes of a liar? No, they're not. My eyes are the eyes of an innocent, sinless little puppy. In any case... Stop judging people based on their looks. For instance, if the person is dressed shabbily, you might think he is one of the many homeless. But often he turns out to be the president of a great corporation. The other day, I got into bed with the most unbelievably beautifully shaped woman and was about to make love when she turned out to be a man. And he was bigger than me. It was like, what are you doing? What gives? It was like he was trying to spite me or something. I might be small, but I can make her gasp. Anyway, this month's goal is for everyone not to judge people by their looks. Do you think you can all do that? Sure you can. Yay! Alone, sure, completed. Let's go. Your favorite Hirosu's rush into poor people's dinner is starting. I'm coming! Oh my goodness, I just love this section. You sure like watching people who are worse off than you, don't you? What do you mean? Huh. There, there, just watch the TV. Rush into poor people's dinner. Poor people's food is so funny. Let's go rush them. Oh, it's Hirosu. She's so cute. You're kidding. No way. This isn't food, is it? What? It is food? I can't believe it. Well, she said she can't believe it. Say, don't you think she's wearing a cute outfit? I wonder where she bought it. What? You actually want me to eat this? Oh, please. Absolutely NG. Ah, she said it's absolutely NG. But I think my size might be a little different from hers. Oh, well. I'll pretend I'm dead and eat it. Ah. 
I'm seriously five seconds short of throwing up. There it is. Hero Sue's usual line. I'm five seconds short of throwing up. That certainly clinches this year's Buzzword Award. That's all for this week. Next time we'll be poor, too. <sighs> That was so fun. Hero Sue always looks so adorable. Shoot, it's the landlord. What? What are you going to do? You dumbass! I can't make something out of nothing. All right, just you watch. Young lady, you will pay the rent today. You're so noisy. There you are. You will pay today. No way. Oh, how annoying. You already owe me a half a year's worth. Then let's do this. What? If you win at Magical Orange, I'll pay you double what I owe. <laughs> you don't know that I'm really good at Magical Orange, do you? All right, bring it on. Magical Orange. An orange is sour. Sour is a wrinkle pickle plum. Wrinkle pickle plum is an old bag of a woman. An old bag of a woman stinks. Stinks is the landlord. What? How rude. No way I stink. No way. Wrong. You lose. Oh, how irritating. I can't believe I lost a magical orange. Damn it, I won't forget this. Ooh, saved by the landlord's idiocy when it comes to magical. Thank you for the food. Oh, Ario, you're spilling so much. Hey, hey, you aren't making phone calls, are you? Why won't you say anything? Uh, let's see. Tokomitsu completely knocks out Ibisu at midnight in Rokopangi. How wonderful! <laughs> Hello, this is Rings Holland? Just kidding. It gives me milk. Oh, Mr. President. That's right. I am most definitely the president. How are you? I am fine. The president is an insurpassable man at any age. More importantly, Milk-chan. What is it? Did you happen to watch the president's speech this morning, Milk-chan? What? No, I didn't. But I was watching Harris's Rush Poor People's Dinner at that time. B -b 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 poor people? It makes the president sad, Milk-chan. You always watch those low-level programs, and that's why you miss listening to my great wise words to the people. <sighs> Probably something so stupid that even Paco wouldn't laugh at it. Stupid? What do you mean, stupid? You can't call me stupid. Because your intelligence level is that of a monkey. Nah! The president is not stupid. I want you to take that back right now. All right. I'm going to ask you some questions. If you can get them all correct, I'll take it back. That's fine with me. The president will show you my true abilities. Problem one. Between Mr. Kakfu and Miss Kakfu, Miss Kakfu is the bald one. True or false? That's true. Bingo. Problem two. Chochne is the cry of a crown eagle. True or false? That's false. Bingo. Mr. President is doing pretty well. Problem three. The capital of America is New York. That's true. Wrong. Too bad. It is decided that Mr. President is stupid. Why? Why is it New York? Why does it have to be New York? More importantly, you have an order for me, right? Yes, that's right. Your orders. So, what are my orders for today? Well... Uh, yes. Recently, there's been a lot of incidents where the cardboard homes and parks have been burnt down. What? Cardboard homes have been burnt? That's right. That's why lots of homeless people have no homes and are in a great deal of trouble. Milk-chan, please go and do something about it. Roger! Roger! Yay! Yay! Save the homeless people! Ooh. But what are we supposed to do? Well, Milk, how about a soup kitchen? What? A soup kitchen? <laughs> you pass food out to the homeless people for free. Pass food out free to the homeless. That's wonderful! Pardon me yet again for my sudden intrusion. I am the voice of Hanage's heart. This song is popular among young people at those nightclub things, right? I've been studying the culture of the younger generation very hard. I don't want people calling me Gramps. But still, I'm pretty old. After all, I, I don't really understand it. 
But if I keep an ear open to the movements in the young generation, they'll think I'm an understanding guy. Bow, bow. It's Komenichi. Aren't I making a good effort? Let's go to the King's Idea Laboratory. Yay! The daddy who created me is somewhere in this place. How dreamy! Hello, world of TV. I'm the director of King's Idea Laboratory, Dr. Eyepatch. Hello, Doctor. Doctor, the cardboard homes of the homeless got burned down. Do something to help them. I know, I know, I know. I have just the right robot ready for you. If you want, I'll, I'll find a replacement for Tetsuko, too. Please, may he not be my daddy. Hey, Doctor, what kind of robot? What kind of robot? It is a splendid, high-efficiency construction robot. By the way, Tetsuko, you developed as a robot that finds shit in the fields. <laughs> Tetsuko the ship finder! Tetsuko the ship finder! <laughs> That's a lie! That's a lie! I am not a shit finder! Now, Milk Chan, hurry and go build homes for the homeless people. Yay! Let's go now, shit finder. But I'm not! I wish you good luck. Walk on the edge of the sidewalk more. And then... All right, Barrel Condo is finished. How splendid. It's a high-rise condo. Looks like everyone is happy now. They are, Milk. Just look at the blissful expressions on their faces. <sighs> All right, our mission is now complete. Let's go eat sushi or something. Yay! Yay! And now presenting, Milk's story of the towering homeless are back. And now, we will have the President's annual speech broadcast. <clears throat> the African elephants have very long noses. To be continued. You, 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 you,
No kids in the pool. You guys are good. That's all kids out every Sunday and Thursday at 10 for adult swim. Come on, let's go swimming. <laughs> it is at that time you'll find a nice lineup of shows. <laughs> See you last 2021. I like my bun. I love my bun. Space Ghost, coast to coast. <laughs> good one, Jace. Oh, yeah, good one, Jace. Ah, now that's funny. Home movies. Name's McGurk, and soccer's the game. The Brack Show. Brack, I can't see. Am I on the road? Not really. Cowboy Bebop. How you doing, kid? Aqua Teen Hunger Force. Try not. What are you doing? Here. Are you ready to rock? And coming this January is Baby Blues. That's a new one for us. How can you guys stand that noise? But keep in mind, no kids under 17 allowed. Adult Swim, Sunday and Thursday at 10, only on Cartoon Network. Principal Fakie's office. Oh, hello, Mrs. Fakie. No, he's out having lunch. Sure. He'll be sorry he missed you. What a day. Love you. Love you. Love you. Love you. Love you. Love you. You. Love you. Love you. The sandwich is dry. You. 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 I love you. Love you. Love you, love you, love you, love you, love you. Yes, please, you make me feel alive, Nurse Bendy. Yes, yes, I'm so happy. I love it, I love it. Oh, I hate myself. I have a loving wife. What am I doing? Can I get a ride back to school with you? Oh, what am I going to do? Help me, Reverend, for I feel guilt. Nurse Bendy again? It's awful. It's wrong. And I can't stop. She's a tigress. Oh, yeah? What'd she do? I don't want to talk about it. Come on. No. Come on. I can't. Come on. Reverend, please. I didn't come to the repressional to talk about my sins. Oh, right. Sorry. Uh, look, just try not to think about it. Out of sight, out of mind. That is easy to say. You can do it. Distract yourself. Give your wife a baby. That'll make you feel like a good husband. Just pretend. Oh, God. I have a trusting, beautiful wife who loves me. All right, hotshot. I get it. Quit bragging. Jeez. <laughs> look, could you quit your blubbering and meet me halfway here? Let's go. Start burying. Come on, Alice. Put some elbow grease into it. Harder. Harder! Bury it! <sighs> oh, it's no use. I just can't. <sighs> okay. Just say two it wasn't me's and three I blame my father's. You'll be fine. <sighs> Thank you, Reverend. So, does Nurse Bendy's pulpit match her steeple? Jerk. <laughs> Howdy, lover. Oh, yeah, yeah. What a boring day. You want to make it not boring? Oh, it will be hard to do, you know. That nurse Bendy sure can uh, dull your ear off. You're always talking about her. Yeah, how boring she is. Whew. The only thing my mouth does in relation to her is uh, yawn. Okay, uh, time to hit the sack. Uh -huh. It's already started. Oh, boy. Weird. Hello, my beautiful little angel blossom. You're an angel blossom. I have something to tell you. What? I mean, great. Look, this isn't working out. We can't see each other anymore. Uh, 
I know, it kills me too, but the guilt is too much for me. I love my wife. God, you drive me crazy. I have to have you now, with my pants on. I need you, I need you, I need you. This is it. I love you. Whoa, 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 is me. I hate me. My beautiful wife, I deserve to go to hell. I should, I should cut it off. I'm going to cut it off. Give me a scalpel. Golly. Ah, oral. Uh, Principal Fakey, why do you deserve to go to hell? And what do you want to cut uh, off? Oh, what a humdrum day. Oh. <laughs> Me out of here. I mean, come in. Ah! Yay, brave! Oh, <laughs> look what you let in! Scat shaker, shoo, shoo. Dad, that's not shit. What's up, son? Well, I know I'm not supposed to question authority. Then case closed. But. <sighs> Hold on. Okay, but what? But what if an authority figure is doing something that even he thinks is wrong? Oh, Oral. Authority figures never do anything wrong. That's what makes them who they are. You see, they have the authority to magically make wrong right. But how can they do that if it's their own conscience that's bothering them? <laughs> the conscience? Buddy, the conscience is the first thing an authority figure has authority over. Why, he can repress that bothersome little fella in no seconds flat. But how can he repress it? By realizing the age-old secret. Repression is the antidote to the apple. What do you mean, Dad? Well, sir, when Adam and Eve bit into the apple of knowledge, they realized... Hi, bud! It's that time of day again when I check in. Hope everything's okay up in heaven. Moralton's been fairly righteous lately. I say fairly because I'm a little worried about Principal Fakey. He seems a little... <laughs> We just closed. Please, Reverend, I'm at my wit's end. Look, either stop bragging or come through with some juicy details. Reverend Putty, this guilt is overwhelming. Gee, I wonder why. You have a wife and a mistress. Most people have either or. And some have none. Please, can I come in? Why should I help you repress your guilt? What do I get out of you lying to yourself? I'll tell you what. You moving in on every other single woman in Moralton, that's what. Leaving me with nothing. No, no, uh, I don't want... Well, uh-uh, no go. Save some room for the fish, buddy. <laughs> Rem, stop! <laughs> Rem! <laughs> Principal Fakey? Huh? Oh. I know I'm just a little boy, but gosh, I sure would like to help you. Oh. You are an authority figure here in Moralton. We count on you to show us righteous from wrongous. You need to take control and make this wrong a right. I know, Oral, but how? With the antidote to the apple. <laughs> what apple? Whoop, well, sir. When Adam and Eve bit into the apple of knowledge, they realized they were naked and felt ashamed. Yes, yes, and rightly so. Oh, and that shame haunts us to this day. Unless we repress it. I've tried oral, but what I'm doing is too wrong. That feeling you have is because you define yourself as a good and righteous man. Someone who would never do something so sinful. So, by definition, you couldn't be doing it, even if you are. See? That's your gift to God. Feeling right. It's like the apple never got bit. I see. So if it feels like I shouldn't be doing it, I'm not doing it. Yep. Just remember the lost 29th commandment. Everything's fine. <whistles> oh. hmm. Hello, nurse. Huh? Oh, are we supposed to do it today? Uh, if by do it you mean you giving me my annual checkup, then yes. <sighs> It's my responsibility to stay in good health for the children, so just the normal tests. Blood pressure, heart rate, blood work, fluid samples, reflexes. Can you squeeze me in today? Mm-hmm. Good, good, good. I hope this won't take long. Hi, Principal. How's your little problem? Problem? What problem, son? Praise the Lord! Get to class, Oral. So, I just came by to check on my test results. Have you got those? Uh, huh. Looks like it might rain again. Good for the pretty little flowers. 
You have an STD. What? Impossible. How could this happen? My wife is the only woman I've ever been with. You must have made a mistake. It's all right here. Second stage gonorrhea. But I've been as faithful as a lapdog. I... unless... Oh, that whore! That filthy trollop! How could she do this to me? It's not that bad. It just itches a little around your vagina. That Jezebel! I'd give her everything and this is what she gives me? Well, no more! Is there no decency left in this world? Uh-oh. <laughs> Diseased harlot! I trusted you! I was going to give you a baby! You broke my heart! Hello, Oral. Oh, no. <laughs> Help me, Reverend, for I feel guilt. Uh-huh. Oh, I think I did a bad thing to Principal Fakey. Oh, yeah? What'd you do now, you little menace? Well, I helped him repress his guilt about Nurse Bendy. You did what? And I think it ruined his marriage. You're kidding. Mrs. Principal Fakey's a free agent? Yeah. Punching out here, Oral. I think you can handle this on your own. But... Look, you just helped that basket case Fakey. Just do the same to yourself. Hot dog! Hey! 